In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Form 7. What we're going to do is we're going to install Form 7 on a list, and we're also going to create a basic form, a very minimal form for Form 7. And to help you do that, I've created an install script that, that you can use to get started. And once you get comfortable, you don't have to use the install script. You can do whatever you want to do, but, but this just makes it as easy as possible for someone to get started. So what we have here is we have a site in Office 365. Uh, there's nothing here. It's basically an empty site. Uh, the one thing I have done, I have uploaded the Forms 7 plugin to my site assets library. And the other thing that I did is I created a list called issues. And you can see it's an empty list. If you do go to the list settings, you can see that there are no special fields. It's just the title and then your standard fields. So it's just an, a basic list with nothing else there. And what I want to do is I want to install Form 7 on this list. And uh, if you remember from the previous video that show you what Form 7 is, uh, we need a, a special field on this list that stores all of our form data. Um, and we also need our minimal form to get started. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a page and we're going to link to a script that I have on my blog that will help you guys get started with this. So let's go ahead and go to our site pages library and let's add a file. We'll add a web part page and we'll call this F7 install. We'll create that page. Now we're going to add a web part. We're going to add a content editor web part, so media content editor. Let's go ahead and edit the web part. And now we need to link it to the script on my blog. And here is that for those who want to just type it in from the video. It's sharepointhillboy.com slash demo slash site assets slash F7 install. This script is also part of the uh, zip file that you get when you download, download the library if you want to get a closer look at that or if you want to run it locally instead of referencing it from my blog, which I would appreciate. So let's go ahead and copy that, and we're going to put the link there. Hit the apply button, and then we will go ahead and stop editing. It says, go ahead and show all content because the references from my blog are obviously not HTTPS. So now you see we have a, uh, just a text box with a button and we have a text area here which is going to have uh, the minimal form. And what I do is you're going to specify your list name here. I'm going to install that field for you on your list and then I'm going to generate the most minimal basic form you need to get started with Form 7. So we're going to install this again on our issues list. So let's put in the list name of issues. Click the install button. It tells us that it successfully installed Form 7 on the list issues. So we click OK and we see that we have a script here. All right, so first, before we do anything, let's look at the list and see what it did to our list. So I'm going to come over here. Let me close this window here. We're going to go to list settings for issues. And you can see that it created a new field called Form 7 data, which is just multiple lines of text field. Nothing special about that field. It's not a custom field or anything. Um, you could create this, again, create this field manually if you want. I've just got this script to help you. We also have our script here. So let's go ahead and just copy that into our clipboard. And then let's open up SharePoint Designer. So here's my site in SharePoint Designer, my site assets, assets directory. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call it issue.js. Let's edit the file and let's paste our script in here. So here's that minimal script. And what you can see is that it's referencing jQuery UI. And I use jQuery UI for the calendar widget. So if you have your own cal calendar widget, you don't even have to use jQuery UI if you don't want. So you can remove those references. I also reference jQuery Min and SP Services, which is the library I use to uh, read and write to SharePoint lists. Um, if you like, you can store these libraries locally. I am referencing them externally. And finally, we see we have the reference to the jQuery Form 7 library. And you would want to make sure that you either download the library locally or that you put in a uh, reference 
wherever that script may be for the jQuery Form 7 library. And here is our basic script. You can see when the page loads, uh, we have a Form 7 initialize function that's called, and this is basically telling the, the plugin uh, what list is going to be, uh, when you display an item, which list are you displaying it from. And there's also a query string that will tell it well, what's the query string that has the ID for the list item. And then we have a function for when the form is submitted so it can save that form back to the list. And again, you've got to tell it, you know, what's the name of the list. And I also have these, these error offsets. I'll document more later, but it's basically where do you want the error messages offset from the uh, different elements on the page when there's not a problem with that uh, element. And then we have a little complete function here that after the save happens, it tells you if the save was successful, and then it refreshes refreshes the page with the ID of the form, the ID of the either the the new item you just created, or the ID of the form you just updated. And then here we have our form. It's just one input, right? We have a div here surrounding our entire form. We've got a one field called the title field, and you can see we added a, a class of required to it, which tells Form 7 this is a required field. And we also have this attribute here, which is special for Form 7 called list field name. If you see list field name, if you put list field name into your form, it is going to try to promote that field to a SharePoint list field. So in this instance, we're saying that this title field will be promoted to the SharePoint field title. If this is not here, it will not copy that item into the title field as well. And then we have an input button that basically whenever you click on it, it calls our submit form, which submits the form. Nothing special. I mean, this is the, basically the most minimal form you can have to use Form 7. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back to our Office 365 page, go back to our site contents. And now we're going to add another page. Let's do file, new document, web part page. And we will call this issues.js. Let's go ahead and create it. Let's add a web part, media and content, content editor. And we are going to link this to that script, that minimal script we uh, put in our site assets library. So it is going to be site assets slash issue.js. Let's apply that. You can see there's our title and submit. And I also want to add the um, issues list to this so we can see what's going on here. So let's add our list, just a list view for issues. And I do want to edit this list as well because I want it to show our Form 7 data. So let's edit the current view and tell it to also show the Form 7 data. All right, so here we have. We have our minimal form that just has one field and it has a submit button and we got our issues list. So let's test it out. Let's put in test, hit the submit button. It tells us our save was successful with the ID of the new entry, which is one click OK, it's going to reload the page and you can see now it has created our entry. There's title of test and then here's the form 7 data for the data that we have. So we have also have the test the uh, test field stored there which is the title field. Alright, so now you've got form 7 working. If you want to, uh, you can basically do whatever you want now. You can now open up this form in your HTML editor and you can add more fields to it and start start playing with it. So just to get you started, let's add one more field to this so you can see how it works. So I'm going to open up our issue form in um, that we had opened up before here, the minimal form, and let's add another field to it, just using some basic HTML. I'm going to create a field called email. So let's go ahead. It's going to be an input type of text. The ID needs to be unique. This is probably one of the most important things about using Form 7. Every field has to have a unique ID. This is how that Form 7 data object knows how to populate the form and how to store it. So make sure it's unique. And we'll give this, we are not going to promote this to a SharePoint list field, so we're just going to delete this. 
and we don't want this field to be required so we'll just we'll just delete the required class from it all right let's go ahead and save that now when we come back to our field our form refresh it we can see we have a new field email and let's go ahead and create a brand new entry so we put in the, and watch so the to show you that shows you title is required if we try to submit the form and the field is empty it tells us please fix your errors and resubmit and it tells you that this field is a required field so let's put test 2 and put in the email address and let's go ahead and save that tells us our ID is 2 it's going to reload the page and you can see we have a, another entry called test 2 and you can see how the form 7 data field has changed now shows title field of test 2 and the email field of test at test.com so you can get an idea for how this works um, you can to show you that it actually is reading the form values let me change this query string to 1 and reload the page change it to test and what I'm doing is I'm just editing the query string value in the URL and reloading the page so you can see it's actually reading uh, from that list item so there you go uh, go ahead and edit the form um, I will have some more videos coming that shows you how to do things uh, with checkboxes and radio buttons and select fields and and there's a bunch of helper functions in the form 7 library too to help you do cascading drop-down lists um, there's also some helper functions to help you read just one or two fields from another SharePoint list. And uh, as interest in this grows, as you guys see value in this, I will definitely take the time to create more videos for you. In the meantime, uh, start playing, have some fun, and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.